Well, this is obviously a time of great distress, a lot of anger, a lot of violence in our country right now. It seems like we've gone from one crisis to another very quickly, and there's a great deal of uncertainty about what the future may hold. I don't know if you've noticed that over the last few years, having a social media account apparently confers expertise upon the owner of that account. It seems like today everyone is an expert on everything. Everyone has an opinion about everything. Well, all of us have opinions, but the reality is social media and the ubiquity of news through the internet and various other sources has given to us the opportunity to participate in a very public conversation that many of us may be ill-prepared to participate in. And so we see people outraged at injustice, and no doubt there are tragic circumstances that are stirring people's anger. And we see other people outraged about that outrage. And we see a lot of people who are angry, shouting at one another, and it's seemingly into the air, without really seeming to understand what it is they're angry about, without really having a full picture of the situation, as if many of us do. I want to take you to a text today that I frequently return to that I hope will be some help. I am concerned about how many Christians are getting wrapped around the axle with regard to these various crises that have overtaken the globe and now our nation. From the pandemic to the protests and riots, all kinds of issues that are continually on our minds and apparently that we continue needing to say something about, whether we know what it is we're saying or not, whether we really know what we're talking about or not. Is it possible that our minds are so much on the things of this world and on the tragedies and injustice of this world that we've lost sight of the fact that our hope for justice is not in this world, but in the age to come? that our true confidence is not in our judicial system or political movements or societal change, but rather our hope is in the Lord Jesus Christ, and that is communicated to us in the gospel. Listen to the words of Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Even though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though its waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with its swelling, there is a river whose stream shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her, she shall not be moved. God shall help her just at the break of dawn. The nations raged, the kingdoms were moved, he uttered his voice, the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come, behold the works of the Lord, who has made desolations in the earth. He makes wars cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and cuts the spear in two. He burns the chariot in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. I'm not suggesting that we should entirely detach. I'm not suggesting that we should stand aloof from this world and be indifferent to the very real tragedies and suffering and injustices that we see. Injustice that prompts and provokes further injustice. A man dies tragically, and a city is burned? This is a solution? Obviously not. I'm not suggesting that we should be indifferent. I'm not suggesting that it's wrong to care. I am suggesting, without apology, that those of us who are believers should have a different perspective on current events than the rest of the world. A different perspective than even a lot of professing believers may have 
and may communicate through various social media platforms. I am suggesting that we need to take these concerns to God in prayer and that we should be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to become angry, because we know that even though anger is sometimes justified and righteous, the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. We need to remember to be still and know that the Lord, Yahweh, He is God. He made us. We are His. He is the one who sovereignly rules over all things. And while we are not fatalists, while we do not sit back with complacency, we do leave vengeance to Him. We give place to wrath. We don't descend into outrage and frustration because we know that there is a God in heaven who will one day make all things new, who will one day bring justice to bear. Our hope is set upon Him. Our eyes are fixed upon Him. Our focus is on pleasing and glorifying Him. We should not respond to these crises, whether the coronavirus or the current riots or the injustices that may have prompted those riots that are committed in our streets. We should not respond to these things the way that the rest of the world does. We should not be drawn into the kind of frenzy and outrage that so much of the rest of the world is. Be still and know that He is God. Trust Him. Commit your cares to Him. Love your children. Pray for your neighbor and seek to faithfully serve the God who made you and saved you and who will one day return and bring you home. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.